Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartinblog.com, and I'm going to do an edit of a photo today. And so we're going to open this up in Photoshop CS5 for the Mac. We're going to be prompted about a uh, profile mismatch, and I'm going to go ahead and convert it um, to a ProPhoto RGB for the time being. I'll down convert it um, when we're done at the end. And so we open this image up and we see if we kind of zoom in that um, it's actually not too bad. There's not a whole lot of work that needs to be done to it. Um, we do have some kind of nastiness happening in the corner here where um, kind of typical thing, you overshoot the background. And so we'll need to do a little cropping, but for now I'm not going to worry about cropping or rotating or anything like that. I'm going to just worry about the image itself. And so um, probably the first thing that I always start with is do we need any noise reduction? So if I zoom in here, I look at it, I'm thinking, no, we look pretty good. Um, um, and then the next thing I usually do is I work on any sort of uh, skin flaws. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom this window out a little bit more. And for the time being, I'm going to hide this guy over here. <laughs> and so let's come in and try to touch up some spots in the face. I'll create a new layer so I can undo it if I want to and just call this face touch-ups. And then I'll grab my favorite tool which is the spot healing brush and I'll make sure that content aware is turned on. I'll now switch over to my Wacom since I prefer that for doing these sorts of operations. Um, if I want to zoom in a little more I can pick an area and just zoom into it. And so I'm using an in-camera JPEG for this. You see I'm at 344%. That's why you're going to see a little pixelization. Um, so I'm going to touch up some of these little spots here. And when you have the lighting the way I do here, we get some kind of cross lighting that will show, um, you know, like oily spots of the skin or just highlights of any sort of bumps on the skin. Um, no matter how beautiful the model, we're all human and we have skin flaws and bumps and things like that. So those generally um, show up uh, when the light hits it and reflects it uh, in a lighting situation like this. So we'll just kind of come along and tap on them, make them go away. Um, we're going to use skin softening, but um, for now we're going to do as many of these as we can real quick because it just generally the skin softening works better when you've uh, done this in advance. It'll cover up some flaws, but um, you're always going to get better results the better you start uh, surface you start with. And I like to do it independent of the skin softening. Now I'm editing on the Mac today primarily because uh, the video recording software is very good um, and makes it easy for me to do this but generally speaking I'll edit on my PC um, there are some subtle differences between the platforms but when it comes to Photoshop and editing they're effectively the same so I wouldn't say that one has any advantage over the other I have a better color managed workflow on my PC so I'll typically prefer that over working here on the MacBook Pro. But it is fast and works reasonably well. This is a MacBook Pro laptop in case you didn't catch that last comment. And I think we're getting most of them here. Normally I'll leave hair but this one really isn't doing much for me so I'm going to just pull that guy out. And then kind of a line here that's going to nuke it. All right, so let's see. Is there anything else that's looking good? And you get to know a model very well when you're editing her photo because you'll be zooming in to every little part of her body. And you do that because you want to find lint spots and things that maybe 
Uh, skin softening isn't going to take care of. I'm not too worried about the arm in general. It's it's going to do fine with skin softening because there's not any uh, significant issues. The little bruise has to go away. Back of the legs here. That looks like fine. And again, we're zoomed in a significant amount, so we're seeing some artifacting here that you wouldn't see um, at a normal resolution. 300% is pretty big. And this color here is just a shadow. It's, it looks kind of weird. Uh, when you're zoomed in this much, so don't lose too much sleep over what you're seeing. There's no leg bruise or there's no um, you know, low quality image here. This is a high quality image uh, taken from either a Canon 5D Mark II or 1D Mark IV. Um, I generally don't care too much about the feet usually. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. Um, to 100%. I'm just checking the ground now to see if there's anything on the ground. Yeah, like here's a little sensor spot that uh, I need to nuke. Of course, a lot of times I end up nuking things that are just dirty spots on my monitor. And I think we're looking pretty good now. I'm going to go back to the whole view. This is a good time to go ahead and save. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a PSD. Now. now, I do take, I have the raw image of this, and generally, if I need it, I'll use the raw image, but if the JPEG is good enough, I'll start with that. This one was, but that's, you know, probably about 20% of the time. Usually, I start with the raw. So if we zoom in a little bit, I can just take this on and off, and you don't really see much of a difference. you got to look kind of close to see. Um, much of what we did. See her forehead and this area and around her face. They all go away. So that's a good start. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little skin softening. And generally what I'll do um, is I'll do a um, uh, create a new layer. Uh, like, let's see, I think it's Command Alt Shift E Yes, um, or that's Control Alt Shift E on the PC. I struggle with this on the Mac. Sometimes I get it wrong because um, there's a Control key on the Mac, and this is going to just be a temporary layer. And it's just make sure my software doesn't get confused about what I want to do. And so, um, normally, I would come in Image Nomic and use Portraiture, and then I can also use um, Dynamic Skin Softener and um, Nick Software's Color Effects. Either one works well. Um, generally speaking, my preference is to use uh, Image Nomic Portraiture. And so, <laughs> the way you use this product is pretty simple. Let's um, look at a mask preview. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by clicking this eyedropper here. And we're going to click on some skin. And what you notice over here it does is that just by clicking on that one thing, it selected a box here of range of colors and then it isolated those colors and that's what it believes is a skin mask um, that it should work on. Now you'll notice it missed a spot in here and if I go and click that, now they see it's to the plus thing. If I click on that, it gets that more part of that leg. If I come over here and click on the back of her leg, you see I've got more of her leg. And I can keep working on that. Now, if I go too much, then it'll start to uh, do her hair and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop there and call it good. Now, how much I do kind of depends um, on the effect I'm trying to get here. So let's see. Let's take this to best fit. Actually, let's go ahead and do this to 
about 50%. And I'm going to come scroll up here. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty good with that. Normally, I'll do either default or smooth and normal. Um, this one I really like the looks of this kind of smooth and normal, so I'm going to stick with that. And so I'm saying create a transparency mask on the current layer, or I can say a new layer. And that's actually what I like to do. I like to have it go and do its thing on its own layer. And then um, I usually um, leave the enhancements as default or just turn them off altogether. Um, you can see on our off they're pretty subtle um, and so I'll go ahead and say okay and let's just see this does it creates a new layer unfortunately it doesn't give it a name and so I'm gonna come in here and call it oops looks like I had a little bump there with my Wacom tablet um, I'm going to come in here and call it portraiture and now that I've got that I want to go ahead and delete this little temporary layer I created and then if I did a um, alt excuse me yeah, alt click you'll see that uh, just that layer it just applied the skin. It didn't do all the skin either. It just did it where it um, was in the color range it needed. Um, so it kind of leaves a little bit of untouched skin. So um, you can see exactly how much um, softening we got. Now we got some of the shoes here. We probably don't want that. So let's go ahead and create a layer mask. And then let's go ahead and switch to the brush tool. And let's switch to black. And what I'll do is I'll just paint that out. And so the shoes are unaffected by the skin softening we just did. Oops, I should probably leave that skin in there. And then I'll see if there's any other places that look like they probably shouldn't have been edited. And this one's not needed. The hair, yeah, I generally don't want that done, so I'm going to leave it alone over there cause, just because I don't want to screw things up. But for the rest of it, I'm just going to get rid of that. Oops. And lips are optional. Sometimes I don't want the lips done, other times I do. Lately I've been doing lips, so I'll leave it alone. Um, I can come here and, whoops, alt click again. Oh, it looks like I moved it. Yikes. That's okay, we can fix that. I got a tool for that. Okay. Um, I just moved it back. Um, when I had switched over to the move tool, it looks like I accidentally moved that layer. It's kind of freaky, never happened before, but that's what happens when you try to do videos at 2.51 a.m. Um, okay, so you can see before, after, before, after. And it's a nice touch. Um, I'm going to go back and look at what I've got here. Looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and save again.